Ah, the birds are chirping and the sunrise is shining. I can't wait to go check out this Pokemon Direct. I swear I've been waiting for these Diamond and Pearl remakes for ages now. Wait, wait. What? Ah, uh, what's going on guys? It's your boy the Crit Magnet here back again once again and the title is pretty self-explanatory but here it is. Seven things Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon can improve on from the previous games because believe it or not, Sun and Moon definitely had its share of flaws to learn from and we're also apparently too hipster for top fives now so with all that said and done, let's dive on in, shall we? Okay, number one. I really want to see my man Marshadow get some actual spotlight compared to getting announced several months before and having nothing done with him. Considering that he's apparently going to be lurking in Ash's shadow throughout the next big movie, I'd like to see him doing a similar shtick this game as well with the MC. Also, Marshadow respects women as he should. Number two. How about a shorter slash less hand holdy beginning for the game? After all, these are follow ups more or less, and we already know how the island trials work due to the <laughs> all of last game. I personally don't have a problem with a longer exposition, but it's mostly just so everyone else has one less thing to complain about. Number three. No more Festival Plaza, just, just please, just no, no more of that. Please, thank you, Game Freak. Just please, Game Freak, no more of that. No, nobody wants it. Game Freak. Number 4. How about we incorporate Mega Evolutions back into the plot, rather than just the post-game? It would make sense that if Mega Evolutions were what helped beat the Ultra Beasts in the first place, we'd actually get to utilize them more during the story if UBs are going to be even more boolin than they were in Sun and Moon. Number 5. More development with the other Tapus because, well, it's not like we don't have THREE OTHER ONES BESIDES Tapu Koko. Number 6. More screen time with the other Ultra Beasts. Same reasoning as the Tapus really. Most of the UBs just kind of sit around and they don't really do anything much in the post game. So having them actually pose a more visible threat in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it's, it seems like a pretty logical idea to me. And lastly, number 7. More backstory for Kukui and Guzma baby. Easily my two favorite characters to come out of Sun and Moon, and I'm pretty sure plenty of other people can relate. Getting some flashbacks of their olden days as best buds sounds like a welcome addition for the new games, and personally, Guzma left a nice first impression on me. Uh, c come on now, that was, th that was funny. Oh, 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 okay. Alright. Oh, uh, hey, I uh, didn't see you there. If you guys found some nice pleasure in today's content, make sure you smack that like button on the nose for me, and let's see if we can get some discussion going in the comments below about anything else you guys think could be improved as well. Also, feel free to subscribe for upcoming quality content coming your way soon. So, with all that said, guys, stay tuned. Till then, you beautiful, beautiful people. I, I, I love you all. It is, this is, this is a dramatic fade with a little, with a little, with a little run on, run on to make it cool and nice nice effects uh, please like the video 